Part 3, VES R3600 Series, Web Configuration. In this segment, we'll cover initial software setup and how a client connects to VES R3600. Logging in to WebPAM Pro E. Open a web browser and enter the default management port address 10.0.0.1 into your browser address bar. The management port IP address can be changed later. Make sure your workstation IP settings will allow access. The default username is administrator. The default password is password. Changing Management Portal IP Settings To change IP settings for the management port, go to Device, Network Management, Management Portal, click on the gear icon, then click on Modify. You can set IP settings manually or use DHCP. Click on Global Setting, select Subsystem Management IP as the default route. For this demo, we manually enter a DNS IP address. If the user would like to have data access through the management port, check the box Enable I.O. on Management Ports. Then click on Save to Complete. Create a disk pool, volume, and NAS share. Click on Pool, then Create New Pool. The VES R3600 has two options for pool creation, Standard and Advanced Pool. The Advanced Pool option enables use of features such as Snapshot or Clone for a pool or NAS share. To use these advanced features, select Advanced Pool, check the confirmation box and click on Next. Input a name, select Media Type, Drives, RAID Level, Stripe Size, and Preferred Controller. Click on Submit. Next we create a new NAS share. Click on NAS Share, type a name, Enable thin provisioning, specify 500 gigabytes, click on submit to complete. To create a volume for block level access with iSCSI or fiber channel protocols, click on volume, then create new volume, enter a name, enable thin provisioning, specify 500 gigabytes, and click on Submit to complete. Create a NAS user and grant permission on the NAS share. Click on NAS account, then add new user. Enter the account name, password, and assign to a user group. Click on NAS Share, Share01, then ACL for the ACL setting. Check the Read Write box to enable Read Write permission for the user. And finally, click Save to save the user settings. The default NAS administrator account and password are admin admin. Users can access a NAS Share immediately without setting ACL. Create an I.O. portal. Now we need to create an I.O. portal used to connect the NAS share or volume with the iSCSI network. Click on Device, Network Management, and I.O. port to view a list of physical ports that are connected and active. Next, click on Portal, I.O. Portal, and Add I.O. Portal. 
For this demo, we'll create an I.O. portal for port 1 on controller 1. Click Submit to apply the I.O. portal setting. Trunked I.O. Ports To create a trunked I.O. port, we need to determine which two I.O. ports will be trunked together, then delete the I.O. portal settings for the ports chosen. Then click on Create Trunk ID. In this menu, create two trunk IDs to make two trunked pairs from two controllers in case of controller failover. In this demo, we'll create a portal for trunk ID. Connecting a client to a NAS share. Now let's connect a client computer using the same IP range as the I.O. portal. Right click on this PC and map the network drive. Type backslash backslash 10.90.2.51 backslash share 01 and enter. Type the user account and password information we created earlier and mount the shared space. Making an iSCSI connection with LUN mapping and masking. This part explains how to configure logical unit number mapping and masking. First, enable LUN masking on the system. Click on Volume then LUN Mapping and Masking, and enable LUN Masking. Next, find the initiator name for the Microsoft iSCSI initiator on the client computer and copy it. Click on Device, Initiator, and Add Initiator to add the iSCSI initiator. Go back to the LUN Mapping and Masking menu and map the volume. Next, open the Microsoft iSCSI Initiator menu again and make the connection. Click on Discover Portal, enter the IO Portal IP address, switch to Target and connect. Click on Advanced to select the Initiator IP address and Target Portal IP address. The Target Portal IP address is the I.O. Portal IP address. Once it's connected, go to Disk Management on the Client System and format the disk. For best practices and configuration, please talk to a Promise pre-sales representative if you have any questions about this procedure. How to use Snapshot and Clone. Click on NAS Share, Share01, and create Snapshot for the NAS Share. Type in a name and click on Submit. A clone is a writable snapshot used to create a clone of a snapshot. If necessary, a snapshot or clone can be mounted or used to roll back in order to return the NAS share to the state it was in when the snapshot was created. SSD Cache. To enable the SSD Cache feature, click on Pool, then on Cache. We can choose to add a read cache or a write cache using solid state drives. 
the SSD cache is configured for a pool. Using a write cache requires that a minimum of two SSD are installed. For this example, we'll choose two SSD for the write cache, then add read cache using a single SSD. An SSD cache can improve read and write performance. For other data service introduction, please contact Promise Regional Pre-Sales representatives for level two training. Monitoring system performance. Click on Administration, then Performance Monitor. Performance Monitor categories include CPU usage, memory usage, physical drive bandwidth, average latency, and I.O. per second. The user can also monitor I.O. ports and management port bandwidth. These real-time monitors are useful for locating bottlenecks and other performance-related problems that might occur. Setting up email notification. For email notification, we need to enter an email address for the recipient and choose what types of events will trigger notification emails. Click on Administration, Services, Email, and Modify. Enter the SMTP server IP address, port number, and SMTP authentication type, sender address, and email subject entry. Click on Save to apply the settings. It's a good idea to send a test email to make sure the settings are correct and the notifications are working. Generate and download a service report. In the WebPAM Pro E interface, click on the Generate Service Report icon. Typically, it takes a few minutes to create the report. Service reports are used for troubleshooting by tech support staff. Updating system firmware. Be sure to get the latest firmware from promise.com and save it to your computer. To update the system firmware, click on Administration, then Firmware Update. Firmware updates include the option to use non-disruptive image update to update firmware without experiencing system downtime. It allows one controller to update the firmware while the other controller is at service. This is not an option for a single controller system. In this demo, we use the non-disruptive image update option. Click Download and Next to start the update process. The controller or system will reboot automatically after the firmware is updated. Log in again when the system has restarted. This concludes VES R series web configuration. In our next video, we will show you how to contact Promise Technical Support for the VES R3600.